Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Emmanuel Ashenor and I am the pastor and founder of Uniting Worshippers. I'm going to give you a bit of history and background of where the team comes from and how we started. So we can understand who we are and where we're heading, in essence. Um, if you would allow me a moment so I can just take you on a journey on how the team started. In 2019, while doing a praise weekend, the Lord spoke to me concerning bringing worshippers together in total surrender and worship unto Him. I had a praise weekend and the motto of the praise weekend was uniting worshippers because that was the ultimate goal. And during these three days, so much happened. God poured out His Spirit. It was a great move. It was a wonderful experience, unforgettable experience with God. And for that whole month of February, I pondered and I prayed and inquired of the Lord on this desire that, 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 that I developed, you know, um, with regards to, 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 to bringing worshippers together in one accord. At the time, I was, I was going through a tough time as well, but I found healing in worship. And that breakthrough in my life, I think, inflamed this desire to make sure, to, to, to my desire to, to share that with others, you know, bring people together and we surrender in worship. So I brought my friends together and I, 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 I laid it down before them. I said, you know, guys, let's come together and let's worship. <laughs> you know, we had our first session and God moved and from that day, we never looked back and we started running. You know, we decided as a group that we will be a move and not a group. We're not going to be a group that's going to rise today and fall tomorrow, but we're going to be a move because we're going to keep on moving. That Uniting Worshippers is going to be this big impact on, on our generation. And we ran with it. We took... We took ground, we took it on, and we ran with it. And we found that God brought people in our lives, people that we had to love, people that, that, that we had to show love to, that we had to groom with, that we had to bring into the presence. And not only, it wasn't about us, but we have become vessels, we have become a channel point where people received um, a breakthrough, people received from God. It was then established that we are running this journey full force. And even though people looked at us as a team and said, because we have decided that we're, gonna not, we're not going to conform, not to be too rebellious, but we're not going to conform to the basic fundamental require, requirements of religion because it is about worship. I think the, the main motto at the time was come as you are. You don't have to go buy a suit, you don't have to do that. Well, you have to be yourself. You have to come and open up yourself. Be comfortable before God. We decided that we're going to be this young people that's going to be fun for God, that's going to be robust out of this world, living our best lives in God. Because when we came together, myself and my friends was not in a good state. We were fighting our battles through alcohol, depression, drinking, smoking, partying. It was, we were chaotic. But when we came together in the presence of God and we connected, a beautiful thing happened. A beautiful thing happened. And because of that, I realized, I saw every time that with every gathering, with every connection, with every moment in worship, every time that we step on a stage and we sing, that we became stronger. That our old ways, our ways of dealing with things according to the world reduced. And people would join us, people that are broken, people that are just messed. And 
But in the presence of God, I cannot say that it is my doing. We cannot say it's our doing. But the more and more we present ourselves as, as vessels before God, the more and more God has cleansed us and purified us. And from there, we connected, we became closer. We were days when we had to forcefully make sacrifices and say, listen here, yeah, we're going to hit the pulpit pure, pure. We're going to fast. We're going to pray. We're going to do this. We're going to sacrifice. And over time has come that today we stand with testimonies that will blow your mind. I've seen young people grow before my eyes and become leaders. I've seen people that didn't want to know anything about faith, that didn't know anything, that didn't know anything about the fundamentals of spirituality and Christianity, but they are now people that can come to me and say, listen here, Emmanuel, it's on, we are moving. People that didn't want to know anything about church, that have been hurt by the church, we have gone so far to people that have been even hurt by the church. People that didn't want to see God, people that don't want to know about church find themselves seated with us in worship. And through that, I've seen people heal from their pain. I've seen people restored. I've seen people gain confidence again because of God. Because my personal testimony, and that I will one day love to share, I'm going to share it still. But in short, this young man who didn't have everything, but I had God. I was also broken, damaged, hurt, rejected by society, by people. But God embraced me. And because God embraced me and loved me, I promised to God that I will not let anybody go astray without having to experience it. I promise that I will be a friend, I will be a leader, I will be a mentor, I will be a brother to they that needs me because I know what it feels like and what importance and what great impact it has for one to have these people in your life. Being the pastor of Uniting Worshippers has challenged me on so many levels, but it has also taught me on so many levels. It taught me how to love even greater. It taught me how to walk a journey with people. It taught me how to fight sincere battles that for sometimes we'll argue today and we have to make peace immediately because the ministry is at hand. So many things I've learned as a leader and so many things our members have learned. But we are restricted on what we want to do. We want to go and touch the world. We are even, not even a world to say, but South Africa for now. We receive invitations from all places. We're going to Hebron, we're going to Fenterstadt, we're going to Camus, we're going to Cape Town, we're going to all these places. But as a team, what we do, we don't ask for any payment because we're doing it for God. And today, as Uniting Worshippers, we still stand. And we have touched the lives of many people. Our members have grown to leaders, business men and women, people that stand on their feet and know that had it not been for God, people that can testify, had it not been for God, where would we have been? I am proud of each member of United Worshippers. But in total appreciation, and honor goes to, Lord, to the Lord God Almighty. Because had it not been for God, where would we have been? Where would I have been? So today I want to ask of families, churches, whoever, to take hands with us. We would like to bring worshippers together on a larger scale. But because we don't charge for what we do, we ask that people donate and invest into the lives of our generation. I want to see more and more young people's lives being transformed. 
I think the great men and women of this age can understand that somewhere they were part of a group. Somewhere they were part of a team. Somewhere they were part. And as, 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 as a generation of now, the arts form a critical part of who we are. But in a church, do we really have the platform for people just to come and surrender themselves before God with no judgment, no restriction, no limitation? So today, now, I want to ask, if you have, even if it's a hundred days, With this video, I'm going to post the banking details of the Nazi worshippers. And I'm going to ask that you sow a seed into our ministry. So that we can reach these places that we have been invited to. Every time when we have to go places, I have to move. We have to move as a team. And we have hearts to touch. We have lives to change. I want to expand Uniting Worshippers on a national level. Because we are Uniting Worshippers. And we would like to keep on Uniting Worshippers. Where we have the privilege to mentor people, to groom people, to take people by the hand and journey with them. To help people lead, heal, sorry, from their pain and find strength again. As a pastor of Uniting Worshippers, I extend my humble plea to you that whatever the Lord lays into your spirit today, if you would like to sow a seed into this move, or even if it's not a seed, even if you would like to partner with us, even if you would like to allow us to use your church, to have these worship sessions. Let me know, invite us. Because it is ultimately to see God's hand move, to see God move in our midst, to see young people that can come before God with no judgment and restriction, no fear of whatever, to break down and find healing in the presence of God. But we don't only just have church. <laughs> we walk a journey. After this, I will allow the members of Uniting Worshippers to share their testimonies of how God has touched them by just being part of a family. I pray that the Lord will bless you. I will make his face shine upon you. The Lord keep you. The Lord give you peace. <laughs> Lift up his countenance upon you. And oh, may he hide you under the shadow of his wings. Bless you in advance. I love you from Pastor E. <laughs> May God bless you. And thank you for taking time out to hear out our invitation. <laughs>